how to start a car detailing business and grow it to $27,000 a month, which is $324,000 a year. It's not as hard as you think, so let's hop in this. My name's Nate Jones. I make videos on my page about entrepreneurship, how to start certain businesses, and which businesses you should start, and which ones you should avoid. So if you get value out of this video, hit like and hit subscribe. Let's jump into this. Car detailing, so I'm, I'm kind of focusing on mobile car detailing because the garage detailing business is kind of a whole different beast and I think there's more opportunity with mobile car, deal, car detailing. I know me personally, I don't wanna drive somewhere and drop my car off, I want somebody to come to me, clean my car, and my car is clean, I pay your money, and you move on. So let's go through this. Number one, the first thing you need to do is you need to know your startup costs. Every business, you should know how much is it gonna cost for you to start. So for this business, very simple, very minimal, I put $500. Now, bare minimum, you could probably go less than that, but $500 includes your cleaning materials, a website, creating a Facebook page, maybe a little bit of marketing locally on Google, maybe a little bit of um, print marketing somewhere, but really 500 bucks is probably enough to really get your business off the ground and running. Um, number two, the second thing you need to do is you need to think of all the ways in which this business can fail. Every business that I've started, and me and my wife, every business we contemplate starting, we say, hey, what are the ways in which this can fail? Um, the ways that it just cannot work, things that just shut it down. Bankrupt the business before you start it. You write those things down and then you say, how can we make sure those don't happen? How do we create strategies around minimizing that from happening? So I jotted down some things that I thought here, um, just some basic ones that always happen in every business. Number one, you don't make any sales. No money comes in, nobody calls you to ask you to detail their car. Your business is existing, but it's not making money because no one's interacting with it. So how do you create strategies around making sure that you can get business? Well, number one, I think the, the, the huge opportunity in this business is just brute force of cold calling, which in this business, it's not cold calling, it's cold visiting. Um, I see so many people on TikTok when I start searching this and I searched on YouTube, searched that everywhere, the people that are really successful, it's kind of funny, it's the people that are out there on the streets ringing doorbells and saying, hey, in the rich neighborhoods, the wealthy neighborhoods, they say, hey, can I detail your car? Can I detail your car? Can I detail your car? Hey, I detail cars. If you ask enough people in this world and you have a good business idea and you do good work, eventually somebody will say yes. So if you go door knocking every single day, you will have at least one to two car details. And if you can set it up where they come back over and over again, you have recurring revenue, which is what I love about this business. So cold, cold door knocking, um, SEO on a website. SEO is the most underappreciated thing in this world. It's search engine optimization. What that means that you create a website and when people search locally, they search your city and state car detailing, your website pops up on Google and it pops up high. So when people, when, when, they're the, when you're the first website or second website that they click and you can answer that phone, you will get that business. So create an SEO plan, um, really research it. You can do a lot of it yourself. I wouldn't pay these high priced SEO experts because sometimes they don't even work. Um, local marketing, so putting yard signs out at stop signs, um, maybe sponsoring a little league, doing something like that, getting your name out there in the local market, creating a Facebook page, maybe running Facebook ads. Um, but yeah, Facebook is really underappreciated. Everybody should have a Facebook page. It's free for your business, so create one of those. And the second way which this can fail is that your quality sucks. I mean, you just don't do a good job, that you have all the materials, you're getting people to call you, but you're just not good. So you need to learn how to detail a car. It's really easy, there's so many resources online, so many YouTube videos of how to detail a car. So put in the effort, start detailing a car, start with family members. If you can detail a family member's car for free, right? You do it for free and you say, how was it? Did I do everything good? And say, give me your honest opinion because I really want to get good at this. So if you detail family members' cars, it's a good trial run for you to see if this works for you. Um, and if your quality sucks, you're not gonna have the reoccurring revenue. In this business, I would say almost every month or two or three months, someone's gonna call you back and say, hey, can I have my car detailed again? My kids destroyed it. Or, you know, it's just not smelling like it was before. So they're gonna want you to come back and interact with your business. So you wanna keep that transactions. How many transactions you can have with one customer makes a business very valuable. 
So if you can continue to have four or five transactions with that customer a year, that means the average I have here is a $200 a, a detail. That means four to five times, that's a thousand dollar customer if you think of um, having $200 of detail. So you wanna make sure that you're looking at every customer as a thousand dollar customer. So if you think about it, you know, to, you really need to nurture those relationships and make sure that you're doing a great job. You need to fulfill jobs. I know this sounds really weird, but uh, a lot of businesses, when they start growing, they start saying yes to everything. And when you say yes to everything, what happens is you don't get to everything because your plate becomes full. So um, what you need to do is you need to, number one, have a strategy to hire somebody eventually. And, uh, or number two, make sure your calendar is managed. The biggest problem with contractors, because um, I work in the contractor space, I transparently own an insurance agency, and we work with contractors. The biggest thing that they have a problem with is sometimes they don't know how to manage their calendar. So they're running everywhere and they forget about things. And when you forget about people, you forget about customers and you don't fulfill your job, they find somebody else who will fulfill it for them. So make sure that you, um, if you're gonna be growing and you wanna have controlled growth, make sure you have an employee or somebody who can help you in mind or you manage your calendar with great detail. Number three, we're gonna do a demand and opportunity analysis. So corporate, I get it. Yes, it's a very corporate way of saying, hey, is there a need for your business? Is there nice neighborhoods, people have nice cars who wanna pay extra money to not detail a car themselves, but have somebody come in and do it for them? Like me, I don't mow my lawn, okay? I don't, it's not that I can't do it, it's just that I don't have time. So I, I outsource that to somebody else. Same thing for cars. Hey, I don't wanna clean my own car. I don't wanna deep clean it. There's Cheerios in between the seats. Have somebody else do it. That's what these people wanna do and they have to have extra money to do it. Is there too many detailing companies? It's kinda of hard to tell but you can really look on Facebook, look locally, maybe make some calls to people and just say, hey, how much do you charge? You know, you can do a lot of kind of investigating to see if there's a real need for this. Um, are there commercial fleets? I mean, I think there's a big opportunity for commercial uh, companies who have a lot of vehicles like plumbing companies, HVAC companies, that their employees may just trash the vehicle and you say, hey, let me take, the, let me take care of that problem for you. If you have any vehicles, I'd love to clean them after hours and you could probably charge probably more than what the average is for a residential car. So do you live close to a city? I would say you wanna live somewhat close to a big city where there's a lot of opportunity um, because that's where all the neighborhoods are gonna be. So being a suburb for the nice houses and then a city for the commercial clients. The fourth thing you need to do is you need to legal up. What legal up means is you need to get an LLC. You need to buy insurance. If you need help with insurance, I own an insurance agency. I would be happy to read your policy, make sure you have the right coverage or even get your quotes um, and uh, and you need a client contract. I say every single business should have a client contract, which basically says, I'm gonna clean your, I'm gonna detail your car for this much, I'm holding myself accountable and you're gonna pay me, right? So it's a signed little tiny one page document that you could probably just hold them accountable that, hey, everything's outlined here, the price is already made up, let's sign it, let's get to work. Uh, the fifth thing is how you can make $27,000 a month in this business, which is also 324,000 a year, which is, which, which is so cool because this business is so profitable that, um, like I said, $500 startup cost that if you're doing 324,000 a year, I would bet your profitability is essentially if you hire somebody, the labor cost. And then you're, you know, I would say you're gonna be at an 80% profit margin if you don't hire somebody. So great business for profit, I really like it. Um, this is a hustle business, right? It's gonna be hard work, but you're gonna make a lot of money if you're able to grind and hustle. Okay, so the average detail was anywhere from 100 to 350 bucks, depending on how deep it is and how big of a vehicle it is and how nice of a vehicle it is. So I just said, okay, let's use an average of $200. We have $200, so we have 27,000 a month divided by $200, right? It's how many, how many details we need a month, okay? So we have 100, so 27,000 divided by 200 is 135 details a month. That seems like so many details. That's so many times you have to clean a car. I get it. Let's break it down into smaller numbers though because everything from, a, from standing out here looks like it's a big mountain, but let's break it down. Okay, that's 33 details a week. Okay, that's a little bit more doable of a number, but how many is that a day if I work five days? Let's say I have two days off. Let's do five days. That's 6.75 cleans a day, which is basically seven cleans a day. So you're doing seven cleans a day for five days a week. Um, you could probably get a clean done in an hour, maybe hour and a half, two hours. So, you know, you're, this may be something you can do alone, but you might be working some pretty long hours. Um, so what I would suggest, this is my opinion, but I would suggest that you find a fireable partner. And when I say partner, 
I do not say someone who has ownership in your business. I would suggest that you don't go into business with a partner. I would suggest that you find somebody who wants a revenue share of what they're helping you with. You pay them a high revenue share or you pay them an equal revenue share, but you do not give them equity in your business. Anytime you go into business with a partner, there's always an unequal amount of output, which is simply means you work too, you're working too hard, he's not working hard enough, or he's working hard and he's mad at you because you're not working hard, or there's a difference of opinion, there's a difference of how you're gonna grow the business. There's so many ways in which partnerships essentially get broken up. So you don't wanna go into a partnership if you can avoid it at all costs. And remember, everybody who starts a business, they have this kind of, uh, I don't wanna do it alone mentality, like I'm scared. So I wanna find somebody to go through this war without me or with me. So what you do is it's kind of like an imposter syndrome. You wanna find somebody to partner with and usually that person's not as excited as you but you kind of motivate them. So they're like, okay, I guess I'll do it. And then they realize, oh, this isn't really my passion, that's your passion and you guys break up and then the business kind of falls apart and then you're like, why did I go into business? And then you just go under. So most partnerships just go under. So I would say if you find somebody who wants to do this with you, pay them a revenue share, don't give them ownership in your business and make it fireable where you could say, hey, this isn't working out, see you later, and you still have your business. But don't give them ownership. So that's one way in which you could do this by yourself. I, I think you could do $324,000 by yourself in car detailing. Um, you're gonna have to probably work a ton, but if you can find that partner, somebody you can kind of give some jobs to, that'd be huge. So if you got value out of this, hit like and subscribe and comment below if you wanna see any other businesses that you would like for me to break down on how to start them or if you should start them.